Do you love your favorite cheat meal or dessert, but then the next morning you wake up feeling like gross and bloated? Well, I have found this new greens super powder that helps with that. And right now, Bloom is offering my listeners 15% off if you go to bloomnu.com slash holly. Hello, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. Even though it won't be Valentine's Day when this comes out, it is Valentine's Day on the day that I'm recording it, which means I have brought you a lovely, very special guest. She's been on the show before, but um, we haven't seen her in a while, and so much has happened in her life since then, so I'm so excited to have my friend Stormy Daniels back. Thank you for having me. I guess this means we're each other's Valentines, because, I mean, we should be being wooed and dined and romance but we're in a studio alone yeah i know but that's we okay we meet here again we have each other that's <laughs> yeah. all that matters <laughs> so um a couple things have happened in your life yeah. since i saw you last one or two you know. one or two i like never hear about you i'm always like what's going on with stormy i never hear about her <laughs> don't believe everything you read <laughs> actually yeah most of it's true you could go ahead and believe everything you read <laughs> So the last time you were on, um, obviously this Trump scandal was starting to blow up, right. but you couldn't talk about anything. Mm -hmm. So we had to like have like kind of this cagey Code. conversation about it. Yeah. And I have to say that actually, thanks to you, my podcast was mentioned on CNN, which was super exciting for me. Is this a you're welcome or you're or, um, I'm sorry? <laughs> no, no, no. This is definitely a you're welcome because now I can be like, I never know anymore <laughs> as seen on CNN, because why would CNN ever feature my podcast? So that was actually super cool. Very cool. I well, you're welcome. Then. Thank you. Uh, yeah, because that was when the story had broke, but I was still trying to honor the NDA. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and the only reason why I ended up breaking it is because, you know, if you sign a non-disclosure agreement, it means that it goes both ways. Like, I, you're not supposed to say anything, but neither is the other party. Right. And even saying no comment is still a comment. Really? Legally speaking, yes. Okay. Saying no comment. So I just couldn't say anything. But they were just hounding me and hounding me. And there was people in my yard. And, like, I couldn't defend myself. Mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't until Michael Cohen <laughs> made the brilliant idea to mention it while shopping his book. And he's the one who said, like, yeah, my book includes this, this, and this. And I fixed this and this and this for Trump, including paying Stormy Daniels $130,000. So he broke the NDA first. Right. And just poured gasoline on that wildfire because now people knew the amounts and they were coming at me. And But if they broke it, then I'm going to break it too. And that's why I was like, well, game on. I really just did it to defend myself. And, you know, obviously now looking back, uh, I did the right thing because, you know, more and more things came out. I didn't realize that it was illegal when I signed it. I didn't realize that he had used campaign funds that he got from Russia. <laughs> like, I didn't realize that there were so many other women so the way they found out about all the Russian stuff is they researched my payment and how stupid, if you're going to pay off somebody and it's not even that much, $130,000 is not that much money to, to Trump. To Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, relatively speaking. Right. He should have just brought it in a duffel bag. Then I would have had no proof. No, he not only paid me <laughs> in a wire, which yeah. is obviously traceable he used it from the account that was a shell corp a fake corp that he had gotten money from russia so like i was the spark that just went t t and took it all the way up there so everything is my fault you know when they searched the cohen's office and found all the records about my stuff they uncovered other things and then it and then we found out like other women came forward and one of them was an underage girl and y you know i'm sure i'll get in trouble for this so, you know, but at the time, I was trying to not say anything. Mm -hmm. And then it was kind of all said for me, so I just kind of owned it. Yeah. It must have been so frustrating to not be able to defend yourself. Of course. That was the worst part. Yeah. Is, you know, when I signed it, um, and a lot of people thought, like, I was, you know, trying to be a gold digger and capitalize on it. But anybody in the adult industry, probably even you, Holly, mm. remembered when that's when it first went down in 2006 and Trump was calling me 
like a couple of times a week. I'm, I put it on speakerphone on sets, on photo shoots. I don't know if any of them was yours, but it was not a secret. Um, so it's not like, oh, I just woke up one day and was like, oh, I think I'm going to like try to get money for this. Like, do you know how many hot famous people I fucked? <laughs> like, come on. I don't talk about them. If I was going to pick one person, why would that be the one? <laughs> like, you know, I'm it not... wasn't your proudest moment is what no, you're saying. <laughs> no. And, you know, I was married and happily married and competing and my horses and my daughter was, you know, I didn't want anybody to know I'd fucked an orange hobgoblin. <laughs> Come on. So when they offered me this money to, like, keep it quiet, I was like, I am in, <gasps> you know, and then they leaked it. Somebody else leaked it. And I'm not even sure who the original leak was. I have a suspicion, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure who the original one was, but it's not even an original leak because it wasn't a secret back then. I could tell you a hundred people who knew from 2006. Yeah. So it wasn't like I just dreamed this up, you know, and they were like, oh, you're a gold digger. You extorted money from, like, kind of hard to extort somebody when they come to you with the idea. And if I was going to extort, I would go big and there'd be way more zeros. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. Like, you know, watching it kind of from afar and Mm -hmm. having known you for so long and just seeing you go through all that. It it was also really frustrating too, because I just felt like there was so much misogyny in the way that you were attacked about it. And, you know, Trump, of course, like getting away with, you know, pretty much like people always defending him. Right. And it was always about like, yeah. And like, I understand what you're saying. The misogyny is because like, I didn't cheat on anybody. Yeah. I wasn't married. Yeah. But so many women, women would attack me about like sleeping with a married man. First of all, I didn't, there was no sleeping (laughs) for many months afterwards, actually. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, and it wasn't even my choice. I wasn't paid for sex. I didn't go to that hotel room thinking that that was going to happen. I was cornered coming out of the bathroom and I froze and I didn't. You know, I didn't say no. I was scared. Like, there was a bodyguard outside the door. I just I just shut down. Mm-hmm. Is it my fault? I'm an autonomous human being. I should have said no. I mean, I am definitely would these days. Right. Probably with a swift kick to the balls as well. Yeah. For good measure. Um, but it was like, how are you going to blame me? Right. Like, I was half his age or something. I don't know. I was not married. I didn't go there for that purpose. You know, like... How is that my fault? I didn't take vows with Melania. Yeah. But I was getting blamed. Why not hold the person accountable who should be? So that's just the fact of just being a woman. Like, that's just, you know, and then take it one step further. And I must be lying because I worked in the adult film business. Right. You know, like, any article about me was was prefaced with the word porn star Stormy Daniels. Yeah. Like, what if I was a school teacher or an accountant? Can you imagine all of those articles every time they said my name? Can you imagine accountant Stormy Daniels? Right. (laughs) Or, like, school teacher. Like, they wouldn't have put it. Right. Because it's not salacious. It's not headline grabbing. It's not. But literally every time I saw my name, it said porn star. And I'm not ashamed of doing porn. But they could have at least added director. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, come on. Porn star and director. <laughs> Award-winning Award director. director. Hello. Come on, let me rewrite this for you. So, but it was just the way that I was treated. I couldn't possibly be telling the truth. I'm not good at anything else. And then all the, you know, the stereotypical, like, I'm an idiot or all the, you know, vagina jokes you can come up with. You know, like, whatever. Oh, she didn't feel him because her pussy's so big. No, I didn't feel him because... I could barely see it. Like, <laughs> and then that's the other thing I got a lot of shit for was like, why did you describe his private parts? Um, like, because he called me a liar. Like, that's the one thing some days I feel a little tiny bit bad about is like making fun of somebody's like, it's like making fun of someone with a disability because his penis is definitely a disability. <laughs> um, so like some days I'm like, I don't want to body shame or fat shame. Right, or right, like right. Genital shame if that's a thing. Yeah. Right now. Congratulations. I just made that up. Anybody, but he called me a liar and it was really the only way that I could prove that I had seen him naked. Like Mm -hmm. I wish he had a birthmark shaped like Texas on his ass. I would have gone with that. Right. But it, but it, but he didn't. And he kept calling me a liar. Now I got shot at twice. My daughter was kidnapped. Like all of these horrible things happened. And the only way I could prove I was telling the truth is to say something only someone who had seen him naked. And my whole thing now is, you know, if I was lying right now and he had some big impressive cock, he'd have dropped his pants on national television oh. a long time. Oh See, she's lying. Look at me. Of course. He hasn't shown us his waiter because he knows I'm telling the truth. <laughs> yeah, that's um So like but all of that goes into what you're saying. It was, you know, being attacked because I was the woman, 
And I think if the situation was the other way around, if it was if it was a female president who had sex with a male porn star, they still would have they wouldn't have blamed that male either. No, they would have blamed her. They would have given him props for getting exactly. somebody so high in office. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, and not only did they preface everything with porn star Stormy Daniels. And I'm only mad because they didn't have the director. Right. Or award winning. Because um, I am a porn star and I, I never hid from it. Right. Um, but, they, but you're also more than that. Right. But, but I am. I'm a porn star. Um, was that they also always included my legal name. Um, and up until then, it wasn't, th- uh, it wasn't ever exp- put out there. And they right. printed my address and my legal name. Do, like, do the, every time they type Bruno Mars name, do they put his real name? Yeah. Or Lady Gaga or Whoopi Goldberg? Have you ever seen Whoopi Goldberg's name in parentheses behind her her stage name? No. No, they did it because I am a porn star. And somewhere, even in the people who consider themselves to be woke or progressive or like whatever, they still subconsciously think of us as less than a person Mm -hmm. in some degree. And I had so many women like put female journalist put my legal name in these articles about me and then try to justify it with she has a real name she's more than that persona she is like she's a human say her name you didn't even ask me if I wanted you to yeah you've always gone by stormy because there's oh there's some performers who prefer if you know them on a personal level they want to be called by their real name and some of us don't but you've always been stormy to everybody yeah my child calls me stormy my husband calls me stormy like, no, only people who call me my legal name is my mother and the IRS, and fuck both of them. <laughs> like, I mean, uh, you call me that, I'm going to pull my gun. I think you're coming for money. <laughs> you know what I mean? But even the female journalist didn't take the opportunity, didn't think like, oh, I should ask what does she prefer to be go, to go by. And, right. and I worked really hard to change that, and I do have to give props to some of them that, that heard me and listened. I was like, using my... A, my not preferred name would be the same as using someone's not preferred pronoun these yeah. days. You know what I mean? Like if I was trans and I wanted to be referred to as him or, and you didn't, you would be fucking canceled so fast. So what makes it okay for you to call me by a dead name? Yeah. Well but, also too, when that name reveals like your location and yeah. it makes you vulnerable yeah. and that's all because. I fucking hate it. <laughs> But that's also because of the stigma that sex workers face, especially like someone like you who went through that whole thing with Trump. And we know, we know how polarizing Trump is, you know? I mean, there's going to be people who comment on this video and are going to be like, yeah, go stormy, fuck Trump. And there's going to be people who are like, Trump's the best, fuck. You know what I mean? It's like crazy. It's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. And facts are still facts. Like you can love Trump or hate Trump and it doesn't change the fact that I wasn't the one that was married. Right. Like it, and his supporters or some of his supporters are just so blind that they're going to blame me no matter what. Right. Right. Or they're going to call me a liar no matter what, even though it's been, you know, I, ha- it's been proven that I'm not lying. My, yeah. His own attorney came out and, you know, admitted and apologized to me and all of this stuff. And it, it's, it's very, very strange. It was very strange to watch. And I'm actually giving a speech at, I, I spoke at the Oxford union uh, a couple years ago and part of my speech and you can see it on you can find it on YouTube for anybody who wants to watch it um, we talked about sex in the media and how it creates this this like shame layer which makes people automatically think it's bad because you can see anything else uh, in the human existence in media mm-hmm. you can watch any movie and it has birth death disease war birth like all of these things like horrific murders you can watch war movies where people are i mean they're just graphic and terrible and you can see birth and pregnancy in movies but kids don't know how they were made like how uh, like how they were physically created like every other part of the human existence can be seen in in television shows or or you know entertainment movies whatever but sex is still considered like and it's supposed to be this beautiful thing. It's creating life. You can watch all these things where life is taken but not created. That's and such an interest. That line specifically is yeah. actually a really good one that you can see life taken but not created. Yeah, and it just makes any sense to me. It's funny, too, because I on Saturday I was at my sister-in-law's house and her, uh, like, eight-year-old son was playing this really violent video game. Yeah. And, like, there's blood spurting everywhere. And I thought to myself, I'm like, so interesting how, like, that's okay for him. But, like, he couldn't see, a like, boobs. boobs. Yeah. It's yeah. just boobs. Yeah. Everybody has them. <laughs> like, and it's specific 
very much to America. Like if you yeah. even look at like a British or like a French Vogue, like there's boobs out. Yeah. Like it's totally fine. So I, and so like I'm, I'm going to speak at Cambridge and I think that I'm going to take it one step further because it's been an additional two years and I'm going to talk about how like the most disheartening thing about this is that people just want to be negative. They want to create, like they want, I can go on, you know, on Twitter which I'm really famous for Twitter. Twitter's my favorite sport. I was going to say, <laughs> I mean, like, you got a lot of props for, like, your clapbacks on Twitter. Yeah. And if I do a clapback or I put something negative, I get thousands and thousands and thousands of the responses. If I put something positive, I get, like, two. <laughs> like, if I post, like, oh, come see me at this thing, like, I'll get, like, ten retweets or comments mm-hmm. or I just push – but post something positive. Yeah. Nobody responds. I tear into somebody and it is, people are just, I kind of don't like them anymore. <laughs> I was going to ask you yeah, how I this. I kind of don't like people anymore. It's I was going to ask, I was going to ask you how this whole experience is like, how does it change you like as a person and like how you see the world? Pretty shitty. Like I said, they just, like, people want to make other, it's, it's really negative And we, we spend so much time like, you know, the TMZs and the gossip sites and, like, um, the clickbait and the the feuds and the TV shows where there's cat fights and, and you want to, like, it's just so petty. If we spent even a fraction of that amount of time that we do on that, because everybody likes that, like, I can be, I can be petty LaBelle all day long. Like, <laughs> I mean, I will, you know, I've waited for some karma that's just now coming to me. Now I've waited 20 years for <laughs> And, uh, so like, I'm, I like a good dose of karma and drama, just, you know, my drama llama gets hungry too. Mm -hmm. But if we took just a fraction of that and like helped and did it, used it for positive, we'd just be in such a better place. Yeah. And it just is really, really disheartening. Like people are, you know, they're, they say like, do you think people are are inherently good or inherently bad? Mm -hmm. And I used to be like, I believe people are deep down. I believe they're good. I don't know if I can say that anymore. Really? Yeah. Like, they're pretty terrible um, if given the opportunity. Yeah. You know, like, really. But not all of them. Yeah. And this this whole experience has definitely weeded out. And it exposed some people that I would have gone to, like, whatever, thinking that these are some of the best people in the world. And some of my clo- – I was very wrong about a few people. Mm-hmm. Some people that I put, like, of the best of the best turned out to be not what I thought. Let's talk about somebody that uh, maybe you were a little wrong about. <laughs> Avenatti? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going somewhere else. I was like, Daniel's going to throw something in my face right now. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, yeah. So that's... N- I was not wrong. Okay. So this is an interesting thing. Um, I... and. I didn't mean to hire Michael Avenatti. Okay. And and this is all in the court documents and stuff too. And perhaps if I bump my head and write another book, but although the one thing I learned from writing the first book is nobody reads books. Um, <laughs> but they read clickbait headlines I, pulled from the books, yes. right? Um, so I did have a hard time finding an attorney. I, one, I did have a hundred thousand dollars for a retainer and mm-hmm. a lot of people weren't going to touch the pre- I get it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Versus, like yeah. Fuck, hot mess. No, that's true. So I did have another attorney lined up. His name was Sean. I can't pronounce his last name. And literally, I was I flew here. Um, I was in the car on the way to meet him when he sent me a text and said, like, hey, on second thought, I think my colleague would be better suited for you. He has more of an experience with political stuff, like more political mm-hmm. stuff in college. His name is Michael Avenatti. Mm-hmm. I was already in the car on the way there. That's how I met him. Mm-hmm. And he was smooth, and he wasn't going to take the money. He was very passionate about it. He was smart. I still maintain he's a very smart man, and mm-hmm. he's got balls of steel, and that's what I needed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't. I didn't trust him. Mm-hmm. But I don't trust. You know, I don't trust easily anyway. But I will tell you what most people don't know is that the entire time that Mike, the year that Michael and I, Michael Avenatti and I were close, we were talking consistently. We were together many times. He was my date to AVN. Mm-hmm. I was never alone with him. Mm. Not for 10 seconds. Interesting. I did not trust him. And me and the guy I was dating at the time, Denver, um, we used to fight pretty viciously about Michael Avenatti because he is the child of attorneys. He's in law school now. He was like, you should be grateful because he had a concept of how much, you know, he was doing. Mm-hmm. Now, we, of course, he was also helping himself. But mm-hmm. the fact that he would even take the case and, you know, and um, 
he he had a soft spot for Mike Lavinati. And mm-hmm. I was like, mm, I'm telling you, I don't trust him. My gut, like my like something's off. Like I feel sick when he comes into the room. This is all stuff that now I trust for my paranormal show. But like I was like, something's not right. And I made sure that I was never ever alone with him. Mm. And you know, and but I didn't I didn't think that he physically was going to steal from me. Mm-hmm. That was I was so caught off guard by that for sure. Yeah, but you bring up a really good point about the fact that yeah, it was. It makes sense that it would have been hard for you to find a lawyer who mm-hmm. wants to touch because that's an explosive case. Yeah, and what? And at that point, it all goes back to that I was a porn star. Yeah, I was I'm sure. Say that too. No, first of all, it's a hard enough case to take it all anyway. There, mm-hmm. It's a gamble. It's the president. You're going to get exposed. They're going to yeah. know where you live. I'm talking about from the lawyer's point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a big deal. I still feel like a lot more would have taken the case, maybe especially women, Mm -hmm. if I had been something other than a porn star. Mm -hmm. It was that was the thing that made anybody who was thinking about it go, yeah, no. If I'd have been a waitress or even just a stripper, but the fact that I was a famous fuck artist, (laughs) (laughs) you know what I mean? Like one of the most famous porn stars in the world. Yeah. They were just like, eh, too risky. And I don't blame them. I'm not mad about it. Yeah. But I, I mean. But it's it, still frustrating. It is very frustrating. And it is that stigma. And, and there wasn't a lot of evidence to support that I was telling the truth yet. It took, right. you know, it came out. Now it, I think it's, anybody who doesn't believe me now, they're they're just, I, they probably also think the earth is flat and the sky is red. You know what I mean? Like There just, are some people just, who think that. Exactly. <laughs> There's just no arguing with them. Yeah. But I mean, the narrative has definitely changed. You know, there's people who who didn't believe me at first that have, you know, there's more people now that believe me than don't for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you've so you your case with Avenatti is closed and you won. I did win. So how how do you feel now? Are you like relieved? Like, is it all over? Sort do you feel of, like you can sort of so um it was, it's bigger than I thought because a lot of it, so I was just a witness and the victim in the case. Like I wasn't, you know, I wasn't the part of the prosecution. I didn't file the charges against Michael Avenatti. Mm-hmm. The Southern District did. The federal prosecutors did. They knew all the things, all the missing pieces, and they didn't tell me beforehand. So it came out in court. And so there's so much more that I knew, didn't know. I knew he had forged my signature and had intercepted my payments. What I didn't know was that I couldn't understand why the publisher and the literary agent, Luke Janklau, weren't responding to me because I was supposed to get paid from them, not Mm -hmm. from Michael. So my first text would be to them, hey, when can I expect this? They, for five and a half months, they wouldn't respond to me no matter what. And my manager would call them, my friend, like, Emails, phone calls, texts, nobody. And so, of course, then my next step was to go to Michael Avenatti and be like, why aren't they responding? And he was No, like, is this the advance for your book? Yeah, and it was broken to four, four payments. I Had got, you put the book out yet, or were you still writing it? So the first payment was due the day that I signed the contract. Okay. And they wired that to me the same day. Okay. No problem. The second one was due when I turned in the, the draft, when right. I turned in the manuscript. That one was five and a half weeks late. It was that one that he stole and then borrowed money from someone else. But it was late. And so the third payment was due the date the book came out. Right. And I was already like, they took five weeks to pay me last time. Like, it's hitting. I'm doing all this press. I'm exposing myself. I'm talking about childhood rape. I'm talking about this. I'm on every fucking talk show, sometimes multiple a day. It's like, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And... I pissed off some people with my book. Obviously, my mom's holding her own fucking press conferences in the front yard in a boat that hasn't seen water since 1972. (laughs) She's selling baby pictures of me that aren't even fucking me. To this day, I don't know if she's so fucking crazy that she doesn't realize they're not me or if she's such a bitch she's selling pictures of somebody else knowingly. Who knows? (sighs) But, like, all of this stuff is happening. Yeah. And they didn't pay me. And so about – they had a three-week window – until they were in super breach of contract. So after that third week, I kind of stopped pushing the book. Yeah. Like, because I'm like, after that advance is payback, then I'm going to continue to get royalties on top. And it was New York Times bestseller, and I stopped pushing it because I thought they had stolen from me. Right. I didn't find out till court that not only had they paid me, but they were so happy with the book, they'd paid me early, and he stole it. Can you imagine how much money I'd have made if I had continued pushing this book? I started telling my fans not to buy it. So wait, you were and trying to contact for, them, but they were ignoring you, yeah, and but so they had paid you. So they, so the publisher paid the literary agent right. who took his 15%. Right. And then the literary agent 
paid me the first time, no problem. Between my first and second payment, Michael Avenatti had forged my signature and said that I wanted him to be sent the money, and then he lied. So then when I started hitting up the literary agents, hey, where's my money? He messaged Michael and was like, I sent you this. What's going on? And Michael was like, don't talk to Stormy. I'll handle her. She's Got a, you. Her, it's in the court transcripts. Michael was to my face. I don't know. We're going to have to sue them. Your book is fantastic. You're an American hero. Uh, all the shit he was saying to me. Literally within 30 seconds, he was messaging them going, don't talk to Stormy. She's a porn star. She doesn't understand reality. She doesn't live in the real world. She was probably partying last night. I'd like to go to a party where I could somehow put $200,000 like on hookers and blow. Like that did not happen. I would definitely remember, but it did not happen. And he was like, don't talk to her. She's confused. She's crazy. So like, it's just that whole like women are hysterical. Don't try. And being a male to a male, they were just sucking each other off. Basically, you're so great. I don't know how you deal with her. I know, man, she's a lot. She's uncontrollable. His exact words were she's uncontrollable. But to me, he was like, I love that you don't take shit. And you're not, people can't tell you what to do. Like, that's the double standard. Like, and he was like, she's crazy. And people were like, oh, she's nuts. Don't talk to her. So this went on for five and a half months. So is it done? No, he was obvious. And then they tried to do it to me on the stand and say, like, I shouldn't be allowed to testify. My evidence isn't thing because I'm crazy. Let's let's go. Like, what year is that? Is this? Let's go all the way back to that archaic notion that women are crazy. You know, like they, we have hysteria. Yeah. They we're all nuts. Let's burn her at the stake. But the point is, Michael Avenai, yes, he was found guilty. His sentencing isn't until May 24th. And I have quite the speech planned. They told me I could say whatever I want. I don't think they realized what they did when they told me I could say whatever I want. They're going to regret that. Yep. And I'm bringing my haunted doll and we're wearing matching outfits. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Um, but he, he's, yes, he's in prison. He was found guilty. Um, but he doesn't have the money. Like he's, the IRS is after him. He stole millions from other people. So he's like, he filed, like whatever. He, the point is he doesn't have it. I'm never going to get that money from him. Um, but the literary agent didn't answer my calls. They didn't whatever. And I'm, you know, I'm hopefully the publisher, although it's not their fault at all, they should be suing as well because I stopped promoting the book because I thought they weren't paying me. So there's How lost much? revenue for them too. Of course. Yeah. And so just imagine, I, I'll i never know how much it could have made. Yeah. I, I'll never know. Yeah. But I think somebody needs to be held accountable because he just hook, line, and sinker. Oh, I'm going to listen to this dude who doesn't know anything. I'm not going to talk to the actual client that I, he ate 15% off of me and literally didn't answer my calls for five and a half months. It's unacceptable. Because a man told him that you were that hysterical crazy. and crazy. crazy. And a porn star. I don't understand reality. Well, this porn star handled millions of dollars a year for Wicked Pictures. Yeah. I wrote and directed three of the five most award-winning adult films ever made. Was the youngest female director to be like named director of the year. But I'm crazy and don't understand money. <laughs> And as somebody who also <laughs> produces and directs films, though not, not on the scale that you've done, I can reassure everybody that it is a fucking bitch and a half to produce porn movies, especially porn movies, because we hit so many blockades and we don't have the budget to hire a huge crew, a line producer. Like we That's wear us. so many hats and we do everything ourselves. So I think that people who successfully produce movies and the adult industry are some of like the most resourceful and intelligent and hardworking people because we don't have the help and the resources that they do in the mainstream industry. Yeah. So but somehow I lost 200 or $300,000. Yeah. No. Cause I, I don't understand reality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about spooky babes. We're going to talk about uh, some new projects that Stormy is working on, including She's come back to direct for Wicked, and we're so excited to welcome her back into the fold of the adult industry. I thought I escaped. Did you pull me back in? Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> porn is like a black hole. You have to move faster than the speed of light to escape. Yes. And uh, I thought I did. Nobody's faster than the speed of light. So <laughs> hang tight, guys. We'll be right back. 
I am a big dessert lover. I absolutely have to have my sugar fix at night. And especially if I go out to dinner, there's no way I'm not ordering dessert, but then I feel really gross the next morning. So that's why I'm so excited about Bloom. It really helps me with my digestion and my bloating issues so that I can wake up the next morning feeling great. Bloom Greens are packed with over 50 nutrients, including whole fruits and veggies, fiber, probiotics, antioxidants, and more, all in one easy to drink formula. Mix it in with water or a smoothie to add to your daily routine. And right now, Bloom is offering my listeners 15% off if you go to bloomnu.com slash holly. That's B-L-O-O-M-N-U dot com slash holly to get 15% off your order. Take charge of your mornings and get into that daily routine that's going to make you feel your best with Bloom Nutrition. All right, guys. So we're back. So Stormy, you segued into a new career, which mm -hmm. I did not see coming, um, yeah. which is super interesting. Uh, you started a show called Spooky Babes. I did. Um, it started because, well, I guess I don't want to say I was always interested in paranormal. I guess paranormal was interested in me. Um, we all have intuition and we all, we all have these abilities, but you know, as we get older, we lock them out, we get busy, we get, you know, whatever. Um, and we sort of leave touch with them. Mine, everybody has them, but mine was a little more in tune, I guess. Like, you know, you think of somebody and they call or, you know, what songs going to go on the radio or you're like, you have this something say, oh, don't go this way, and you go a different way, and then something bad happens. Your gut instinct gut, about my Right, my gut instinct <laughs> about my climate. Um, so I was I always had kind of that. And then for, like, my whole life, one or two big things happened a year where it was like, holy fuck, that just happened. Yeah. Like, big, undeniable things. And if, actually, if you go to the Spooky Babes Instagram, I have a video that I shot 13 years ago of this that happened in a hotel room. So, like, it's always been going on. But then, you know, in March of 2019, I moved into this house in New Orleans, and that's where I'm from. You know, New Orleans is the only place I've ever been where the actual real estate signs out front will say haunted or not haunted. Like it's, Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh my Especially God. down in the front quarter. I've always wanted to go to New Orleans. Oh, like, that's the one place I've it. always wanted to visit, and I've never been. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very special. Um, and so we moved in this house in the garden district and it's a 200 year old house. And, you know, I knew it was haunted. Everything it's pretty hard to find something not, especially that old mm -hmm. in a city that's just so filled of trauma. It's, it's like not no pun intended. It's really the perfect storm between, you know, slavery and yellow fever and changing from French to the, you know, it's, it's just a lot and it's a port city. So it's, it's all these things coming in mm -hmm. and it's surrounded by water. I mean, hurricanes, it's just, and it's one of the oldest cities in the United States. Mm -hmm. So it's, it literally is just a melting pot of religions where you have the, you know, Catholic, Protestant, voodoo, like it's just everything in this mm -hmm. tiny little city. Like New Orleans is not very big. It's only like 300,000 now. Mm -hmm. So you have this place that's like already perfectly set up to be haunted. Mm -hmm. And I move into this house that is next level haunted. Um, everything you can imagine. It had all of the things. And I actually made a list. 22 people stepped foot in that house in the time I lived there, and 21 of them had paranormal things happen to them. I thought I was going crazy. My partner thought I was crazy. I, nobody would help me. I put cameras in the house. I started documenting stuff, and I started having health problems. Just, like, all these really strange things were happening, and I just wanted to get some answers, and nobody would help me, so I decided to go to them. So I went to another paranormal investigation that was known to be haunted that they did a documentary about and it was at that location that's known to be haunted like I said there's a, a show about it that everything kind of lit up that's where I got my haunted doll Susan that first day and it was so cool and I tapped the person there was like you're really gifted like you're spotting you are knowing things that like most people don't know that right. are accurate about this house right like things I that the documentary had been shot but it hadn't been released yet okay so I'm saying things about this house and they're like her that did you tell her that no because the movie wasn't out yet right and like I was pegging where the bodies were found like stuff and so then we just kind of got bit by the bug and me and my partner Justin decided to like do it for real and we got a tour bus and I uh, I had gotten some money from winning the Ohio lawsuit where I was falsely arrested by Trump supporters oh yes <laughs> which is a whole nother side story yeah and I took that money and I invested it into spooky babes so I funded it I you know I directed it as much as you can direct a yeah, you know, you can't write lines for the ghosts, but right. 
and we brought in experts. And so it's me and my partner, Justin Loop, and we're on pretty much all the episodes. He's just not on a couple that were like, I did like all girls stuff mm -hmm. episodes or whatever. And we have guest investigators. And then, um, I brought it, then the pandemic happened and the, you know, I feel kind of bad sometimes because COVID was great for me yeah. in so many ways. First of all, I got the tour bus for less because my there was a, like four months where I was literally the only tour bus on the road. They were all parked because no bands were on tour, no right, comedians, no right. nothing. And ghosts don't get COVID. So it didn't affect us shooting and we were a self-enclosed crew. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we were self-contained. So we didn't have to worry about catching, not being able to shoot. So you're going to different houses that yeah. are haunted, right? Were yes. some of them lived in? Were most of yes. them vacant? It was probably both 50-50. Okay. And the cool part about it is that I was able to help out my friends and adult because they weren't shooting necessarily. And it all goes back to like, I'm not, this is my money. I am, this is my project. Um, and I don't want to have mainstream people come in and not respect me or try to spin it. And so I brought Barrett Blade and, and like he's been a wicked worked on the wicked crew for a long time you've actually shot me and barrett together mm -hmm. i brought you know i brought in um my ad uh lighting guy joel he did who i just worked with for the first time really? this last week yeah yeah so he was on the show with us and and a, a couple other people but i was able to bring in you know brian mm -hmm. walkers is, is a, a a dp and editor he's actually my editor for spooky babes he has all of our footage um so it was pretty cool my video tech and it's just I brought an adult crew and mm -hmm. I was able to do that and um and so we have about 15 episodes shot and ready and I was about to release them I was in the process of shopping them when I did got invited to do surreal life last July mm -hmm. and so I kind of backed off of my show because I know VH1 spent millions on surreal life and that's coming out this summer. And we had some paranormal stuff happen on Surreal Life. So I'm going to let that come out first and then hopefully. What's kinda... Surreal Life? So remember it used to be the old VH1 show. And the idea was they used to put train wrecks in a house, like washed up celebrities. And then. I think so. Like, like uh, Minnie Me was on it and he was peeing in a corner. Ron Jeremy did it. Uh, oh, yeah. Flavor Flav yes, and Bridget course, Nelson. Like it course. was just kind of a hot mess. Yes. I and, oh my God. How did I forget about that? Yeah. Show? Okay. Because it's been 12 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so they asked me to do it and I was like, absolutely not. I'm not doing this. Like, yeah. what is this what you think of me? <laughs> And, uh, but this is the reboot and it's, it's still for VH1, but it has a different production company and a different vision. And this is about people who are not the, their real story. Isn't what the perception of them are. So there was mm -hmm. eight of us and three of them had never even tasted alcohol. So there's no like yeah. orgies and yeah. sorry guys, there's no orgies. There's no like drug fueled party nights. Like it's nothing like that. It's all people who the public doesn't really know who they are. So we got to mm -hmm. tell our stories so that's why I eventually said yes. Um, and it's really cool because we, when I first got to the show, they were kind of like freaked out by me. But I ended up getting to read everybody's cards. And my haunted doll Susan is on the show with me. So why not wait till that comes out and then re-pitch my show? In the meantime, we're still doing stuff, you know. And, and I've been to some, you know, amazing places. We've been to The Conjuring House. Oh, okay. And that place was Barrett Blade got attacked in the upstairs hallway, and it was so scary there. He and I slept in the driveway together. Um, but we've been to the Conjuring House, the Lizzie Borden House. Um, Justin and I have been to the Myrtles. We've been to the the Bel Air House in Ohio. We're actually going back and doing a four day lock in there um, in April. Um, we've been to the Velisca Axe Murder House. That place is fucked up too. Beatty Mansion, Malvern Manor, uh, McIntyre Villa. Vale Mansion, uh, I'm forgetting a bunch. Uh, what's Wilson the most, Castle. What's the most intense experience that you've had so far? Conjuring House. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's the one where Barrett was attacked? Mm -hmm. So that was an interesting night because we had shot the night before at the Lizzie Borden house. And it was like, like a couple hour drive. And, and that was one of the ones I didn't have the tour bus for. Those were fly dates. So I rented two SUVs and I sent the crew um, and one SUV and me and my partner, Justin, wanted to go to Salem and get tattooed because we get tattooed by uh, Black Veil Tattoo. So we took a little day trip while they went and rigged because they need to run cables because we run, we like uh, run a DVR system in yeah. all the rooms. So right. it, it takes hours to set up. And so Justin and I went to Salem for the day. It was me, Justin and, and Susan, the doll. 
and I we were getting tattooed and the crew was blowing up my phone. They're like, shit's going crazy. Barrett's like, fuck this place. My camera just caught fire. Like I got punched in the back of the head. Something trying to push somebody down the stairs. He's like, the energy is not safe. I don't, he's like, Stormy, I don't want you to come here. I think we should abort mission. And, I, and of course, Justin's like, fuck yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> like, you're like, what? This is, this is exactly like, what we want. <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe. Because well, I've known Barrett since I was 17. So if he's like, I don't want you here. Yeah. And I've known Joel, you know, I've yes. known these people for so long. And they're like, it's not safe for you. I was like, maybe we shouldn't go. And Justin's like, we're going. <laughs> but he's also 24 and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> So, and he hadn't had anything really ter- terrifying happen to him before. Yeah. So, um, but I did have a weird feeling about the doll, about my doll. Cause remember she was in a case with Annabelle who the doll- she was, I was going to ask you, yeah. I don't know anything about your doll. So she was, she was owned by Ed and Lorraine Warren and they are the ones that did the conjuring house. And I just had a weird feeling like maybe I shouldn't bring Susan into this location. And I called somebody who was very familiar with Susan that, that had had her before I did and he was like I think it's your call but if you want to have her sit this one out this is okay Mm -hmm. so I remember leaving the tattoo studio and Justin buckling Susan in the back seat like literally putting her in the child's restraint and I drove and we get there and we were running late it was dark we couldn't find this place it's in the middle of nowhere in Rhode Island like literally back roads I thought Justin and I were going to die before we even got there (laughs) you know we get there Barrett's outside he's pissed David Childers is like storm there's some crazy shit going on like we had a camera battery just catch fire like just some really crazy things happen and we got there and Justin and I got ready as fast as possible we had some other stuff happen in that meantime which I'm not going to give it all away yeah but we were filming for a while and we decided to take a, a mini break. We, there was a, you know, half guys, half girls. It was like an even split on this one. So the girls took a break on the couch and we were sitting on the couch upstairs and the guys were down in the basement shooting. And when you're shooting stuff, like kind of like porn, but even more, cause you, you want to make sure you're not that what you're getting is, is paranormal. Mm-hmm. So we weren't walking. We weren't talking. You don't want to move, especially when you have people below you running audio. Right, of course. Um, you don't want to walk around. Is that footsteps? No, it's yeah. just stormy taking a piss. Like, yeah. you know, yeah, like, yeah. you don't want to doing things so we're sitting there I'm actually I remember I was scrolling through like Instagram or something and I heard Susan scream like in my I don't know how I heard it but I just got this overall my head, like something was wrong so I jump up and I start to run and as soon as I did that Justin said he was in the basement and he said he turned to Barrett and David and was like something's wrong with Stormy we have to go so they were already on the move up the stairs as I was on the move like like he knew right away like something's about to happen my the keys to the rental car were in my purse in a bathroom on the other side of the house like there was nobody anywhere near it I didn't even get to the front door to open it and the car alarm went off before we were like anywhere near it Mm -hmm. because I had it locked I go around the corner of the house and run down the gravel driveway. I turn around. The car door is open, and the doll is unbuckled and face down on the ground. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was so scary. Oh, my God. I was like, I'm done. I'm done. So what does the doll do? Like, what is her purpose? Weird that we kind of don't know. I, okay. I've, I have found out the history of her. Um, she belonged to a little girl that passed away in 1955 of, we believe, to be stomach. Something stomach. Mm-hmm. And after she passed, the family that had her said that they started to feel uncomfortable around her. Mm -hmm. And so they called in paranormal investigator Ed and Lorraine Warren Mm -hmm. to cleanse the house. And they took the doll and they had her for a while. So she didn't really do anything before I met her. But we, you know, if she was here right now, I didn't bring her today. I should have brought her. Because anytime I do a podcast or something like that, people will usually say they they have her that we Mm -hmm. didn't hear. But we've got like 50 EVPs of her. Um, I know it's the same spirits because the voice is always the same and she does kind of a very specific thing and what's I'm, an evp oh electronic voice phenomenon okay so you and i are talking and we won't hear it but if you listen to the recording you'll hear it oh so that's a, like one of the best paranormal tools is we take a recorder in and uh into a haunted location and we say like you know big thing is i'm always very careful to treat spirits entities the dead ghosts whatever you want to call them the same as you would treat a living person like you're in their space right like you don't go in and provoke them like you enter you ask permission you know and i i do live playback which most investigators don't do so i have my recorder in one hand and i have one earbud in mm-hmm. so i'm hearing it at the same time right okay most people do bursts where they listen back i like to do live record or live listen i mean so we'll go in and i'm saying hi you know 
is there anybody here with us? My name is Stormy. This is Justin. This is David. This is what, you know, we go, we go around whoever happens to be with us is, you know, and they try to like, we point some and Justin will actually say, my name is Justin. Nice to meet you. Hi, my name is Barrett. My name is Joel. Nice to meet you. But I'm listening. And, uh, you have a lovely home. Is it okay? We're not here to harm you. We're not going to make you leave. Just, we would like to, is it okay if we hang out for a while? If you want us to go, tell us so. And if they say they want us to leave, we turn around and we leave. Mm -hmm. um, but usually they just want to talk and communicate, but that's, but you are listening to it. Right. You know, it's called electronic voice phenomena. And so I always try to like, you're in their space. Like, yeah. Why go in and like, yeah. It's so interesting because I've, I've always been fascinated by ghost stories. I mean, I think everybody like finds them so interesting and I love like horror movies and like anything like paranormal related, but I've always like been on the fence about how I feel about it, but I will say, I do have like one ghost story. See, this is the thing. So Everybody's everybody, got one, everybody's right? Everybody's got a ghost story. I can't yeah. tell you how many times I tell people like I have my backpack, my spooky babes gear or whatever. And they're like, you're a paranormal investigator. I'm like, yeah. They're like, oh, you're a medium. I'm like, yeah, I see dead people. This is what I do for a living. I have found bodies. I have found people's like suicide notes like I have done some fucked up shit Holly. yeah and people are like oh that's crazy you're crazy and then like if you sit, like sit next to them on a plane or something like that at first they're like mm, okay that's not right. but there was this one time there like, yeah everybody it's has a ghost so story even if they are th out the gate they're like I don't believe in that that's ho how can you how do you sleep at night taking money from people like mm -hmm. first of all we don't charge for investigations or house cleansings like, I don't make money off of that. Mm -hmm. I do charge for my readings, and right. I am booked through May right now. Right. Like, I do charge for readings, but I don't charge for the other stuff. I don't think it's ethical. Right. Um, so I'm not really making money off of that. Yeah. Can I tell you my ghost story? Yes, please. Okay, okay. It's, I'll, I'll make it quick. Um, so I was about 12 years old. I was with uh, my best friend Jessica, and her grandmother had just died. Mm -hmm. And she had a really nice house in Pasadena, and her mom was kind of, like, clearing out all was the stuff. Was it in the first three days of her death? I don't remember. Yeah, the first two days, are, people are kind of still stuck here. Okay, I don't know. It was it was pretty soon, and so she was like, "Okay, I need to go clear up these things. Uh, I'll drive because she had a pool, which mm -hmm. we didn't have. She's like, I'll leave you at the house. You guys can hang out by the pool, and like, I'll go do this stuff, and I'll pick you up later." And I was like, "Okay, cool." We're hanging out by the pool, listening to Jane's Addiction, eating salt and vinegar chips. And I'm like, hey, I have to use the bathroom. And she's like, okay, it's in there to the right, whatever. And it was a pretty big house. So I go in, and I wasn't paying attention, so I get kind of lost. And I am, like, wandering through the house. I'm like, where is this bathroom? And then I see, like, a bathroom through a master bedroom, like, at the other end of the um, house. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just go in there. So I'm walking towards that room. And the minute I get into the master bedroom before I get into the bathroom, there is like a visible, like there's a tangible change in the atmosphere. Mm. It's really weird. Like I suddenly felt like this strange tightness. So like, did in you feel the, the air. temperature change or did you feel that like vacuum where it feels like the air is sucked out of a room? It was more of like a vacuum. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't a temperature change. And the closer and closer I got to the bathroom. Did you feel the, the spider webby thing? I felt like something was trying to like stop me from going in like there. The yeah. Thing. yeah. Like something like, and the closer I got, the more like the air was like yeah. contracting on me. It was fucking bizarre. And I was like, okay, clearly I'm not going to the bathroom in here. Like what the fuck? And so I turned around and I left and I found the other bathroom. And then I came back outside and I told my, my girlfriend, and I had thought by the way that the grandmother died in the hospital. Like I did in that room. She died in that room and I didn't know she died in the bathroom. Oh geez. And so <laughs> her, <laughs> yeah. And so my, so I told my friend, I was like, yeah. So I like, what's up with that bathroom? She's like, what are you talking about? I'm like the one through there. I couldn't find the one you directed me to. And I'm like, there's some weird shit going on there. I tried to go in there and I explained to her the feeling that I had. And she's like, that's the room my grandmother died in. And I was like, okay. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. And that's, see, so that's the part while filming a show that is so hard because you could just, you could have just made that up. Yeah. You know what I mean? I believe you because I've experienced it. But yeah. on the show when I'm like, I have a pressure change, I have a temperature change. Like you just like something you can't see it. Something just touched me. Like something like whatever. Like we have a lot of technology now. Like there's been times where I've been like, there's something behind me. David turned on the SLR camera and it maps the thing. And I'm like, she's over my right shoulder up on the ceiling and they'll turn up and they'll scan the room. And sure enough, we'll have a figure up there. Like whether we, it comes up on thermal or like whatever. So the only way to prove that I'm correct on that is to say it first and then find it. But like sometimes the gear doesn't work or sometimes you're not filming and sometimes you're just, you know, you're, there's no way to capture it and you're just trying to convey to the audience like this is what I'm feeling here 
you were legit because you were validated because that's the room she died in and you didn't yeah. know. Yeah. But on the show, somebody could be like, oh, that was scripted. They told her. Yeah. So it's so hard to prove that it's true. Yeah. So, and that's, so at this point, it's not even my objective, which was mine at first. I'm not crazy. This is real. You have to believe me. I'm telling the truth. I've had, in the last two years of doing this, I've had to let that concept go. I have to just accept that there's, there's no way that I can convince people. But what I can do is do what I just kind of did, for, like, is say, like, no, that's real. You didn't imagine yeah. it. It's, it's validated for the people who need to be validated, for the ones that haven't had the experience, don't want to believe, or just fucking hate me because, you know, <laughs> I'm very hateable, apparently. Um <laughs> I just have to let those people go. Right. That's, those are not, instead of trying to convince the haters and focus over the here, I just need to concentrate on helping and validating the people over here. And most importantly, the ones who are also dead. Yeah. <laughs> Living and dead. So how has it changed your, like, what do you believe now about like life and death? Do you believe That's like. so interesting. I'm not afraid to die anymore. Okay. Like I have no fear of death anymore. Do like, you think that, so what it, is it with ghosts? I mean, they don't all hang around, right? No. Like, and there's, there's, I mean, this is a conversation that we could get into for hours. So there's many different things and, and I'm still learning. I'm definitely not the expert and I'm very blessed. Oh, and I say that. <laughs> oh, I just threw up a little bit of my mouth. I'm very lucky um, that I do. I have changed the narrative in the, in paranormal. Cause that's the other thing. When I first got in paranormal, they hated me too. They're like, she did porn. It's fake. Oh, she went from sucking dick to ghost now. Okay. Like they were gatekeeping me. Yeah. Like I had to work really hard to be accepted into that. And it's such a niche fringe field that they're used to being considered crazy and discriminating us. And now they're doing it to me. Yeah. It, oh, oh, she just got a show cause she's famous. Oh, she got a show cause she fucked the president. I'm like, actually I got a show cause I paid for it. Yeah. And once I like kind of put that straight, anybody can have a show if they want to spend their own money. Yeah. They thought I'd been given it. Right. So that was a big part of it. Um, as well, but I will say that there are ghosts that are lost almost. They, they usually, those are the ones you usually see that were like, um, uh, died tragically. It was unexpected. They mm -hmm. were like, it was like a shark. And, um, and then the ones that have like unfinished business. And those are usually like the murder victims or whatever of bodies who haven't been found or, you know, things like that. And then a lot of hauntings or whatever, they're not even intelligent. So you have intelligent and unintelligent. You can go to a place, and if you're in a location that something happens specifically at the same time every day or, like, whatever, it's just a stain. It's a mm. pattern. It's not intelligent. It can't hurt you. It can't interact with you. It's just res or residual. It's almost like something's happening on a loop. Mm -hmm. Some people call it a stain. Some people call it residual energy. Some people call, you know, um, battlefields are a lot like that, mm. you know, places like that. Or if you're in a place that someone was at for a very long time and they had a, a habit. Every day at five, you know, every day at five o'clock, he would come home and take his boots off and sit in his chair and have his pipe. If you're hearing like smelling cigar smoke at the same time every day, mm -hmm. you can't even interact with it. Right. It's there, but there's also no reason to clear it. It's not trapped or lost or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you have those and then you have, um, entities that are, were never human. You'll hear them referred to sometimes as non-human entities demons can fall mm -hmm. in that category, but demons, that word is thrown around so much. Mm -hmm. And I'm just now getting into a different aspect of that and thinking that um, demons may be aliens. Because if you think about the way people draw aliens and people draw demons, what if it's just the same thing and it depends on how you were raised? Mm -hmm. Like if, say you're super, super hardcore religious, Christian, whatever, and you look out your window and you see this creature looking at you you're gonna be like oh jesus save me you're automatic and and you're taught not true. to believe in outer space right that we're the only that god is the only god and we're yeah. here aliens are you don't believe in aliens and so you see this thing you're automatically your brain is trained to go to that to demon mm -hmm. so but imagine that you are not religious you're whatever and you work at nasa <laughs> you know and you believe that you're watching ancient aliens on tv and you see the same thing looking at you Demons is not even on your radar. You're right. going to be like, I solved E.T. Yeah. It's you know all about I mean? your interpretation. Yeah. I think that we make that mistake a lot. And some and some people think that all ghosts or spirits or whatever are evil. Yeah. I have found that there is every, there's, they go from here to here and everything in between, just like with people. I was just going to say. Just, just like, like with people. people. Yeah. And some of them have been provoked or they're frustrated, you know? And like sometimes when people get scratched, they automatically think, oh, it's an evil presence. It's a demon. No, like maybe it's something just getting your attention or it's frustrated. Can you imagine like being an entity on this planet? You've lost your human body. You've lost your ability to interact with people and you're trying to get someone's attention and they like don't see or hear you. Like yeah. that, like, that so would be. So you're probably going to get a little aggressive. And, yeah. All right. 
you know, and, and then there's poltergeist, which is not even a separate thing. Yeah. That's caused by the actual human. That's why it surrounds so many like pu- pu- like girls going through puberty right. and it's hormonal changes, like where they lash out, like, you know, and sometimes that's like a lot of the things that people think they need an exorcist, they're possessed because things are flying off the wall. That's a poltergeist. And the movie poltergeist really fucked that up because they, they named it the wrong thing. Oh. The, that's an, that movie is a, like that's evil. That's a haunting. That's if you watch the poltergeist franchise, yeah. that's not a real poltergeist. A real poltergeist is poltergeist is is your own energy. Interesting. Like I have a little bit of that, but I'm called a slider. Like, I mean, uh, just not to call him out right now, but Daniel from Wicked is here right now, our PR person, and he will tell you going as far back as 15 years ago of me directing the running joke on set is Stormy's not allowed to touch the electronics. <laughs> and I had no idea why. I just know that if I touch a, a card, it erases. If I pick up a camera, the batteries die. Like, they do – my crew and porn, it's running joke. Do not – I'm not allowed to touch anything. They'll be like, how many times have you been on set and somebody been like, hey, well, hold this camera, and you just hold it for a second? Yeah. They – I'm not even allowed to do that. I'm not even allowed to use the sticks. Wow. Yeah. Like, I, I fry the electronics, but that's a – that's poltergeist. It's, it's me. It's, it's human. That's so interesting. There's so much. We could go on and on and yeah, on. Yeah, I know. I know. And we got to get to your directing career. Um, we haven't even talked about, like, my theory on Bigfoot or, like, oh God. Okay. others. Yeah. Clearly, we're going to have to come back and we're going to have to do just a paranormal um, podcast. Yes. Uh, I, um, I've always wanted to like go to a haunted house. Like I'm so fascinated. I live by in that one. Stuff. I live in a haunted church. And I've New always Orleans. wanted to go to New Orleans. So I guess I'll have to come visit. You okay. Can, you can meet Susan. Yes. <laughs> Violet can play with her. Yes. <laughs> All right. You're back. You're yes. back in the adult industry. You are going to be shooting for your, your, you've come home. I've come home. Yeah. To your company, Wicked. Um, how did that come about and how does that feel for you? I mean, it was pretty amazing. And this is not to go back to paranormal. This is a little bit woo. Okay. Like um, on December 20th. So at the beginning of December, I have a friend named Bunny Danger. Her video music video just came out today. Actually, I directed that and mm. it's, it, we paid nothing for it. I, it's run and gun me with, you know, one camera guy, me in new Orleans, whatever. And I was like, my partner on the show, Justin was like, I, I knew you direct it, but like, you're a director. And I was like, yeah, motherfucker, what do you think I've been saying to you? Like, but he hadn't seen, he doesn't know me in that capacity. Right, right. You know? And so I was like, I miss it so much. And then like the next week, it was December 21st, which is winter solstice, Yule, if you're like witchy mm-hmm. like we are, obviously. Mm-hmm. And so that's the day of the year you're supposed to like set your intentions. You're supposed to burn the things you want to release. And then you're supposed to write down your wishes and put them in the thing. And the only thing I said was, I want to come back to directing. And I put, I lit my candle. I did, you know, did all the stuff from the full moon, did all the witchy spells, did all the things. And two weeks, not even, I guess like two or three weeks later, I was at the expo show. Um, and Seth Gamble came up to me and he was like, have you heard? And I was like, what? He goes, everyone owes you an apology. And I'm not going to go down that road. I see Daniel getting twitchy over there. Um, some stuff had happened with the company. It was a lot of, it was one of the reasons I left. Um, he was like, I think, I think that you would be interested in coming back. We've made some changes. And I was like, I don't know, like whatever, but I do want to direct. And then I guess he went back and told Axel Braun like, Hey, so I think Storm is here or whatever. So Axel walked up to me at the award show and he was like, let me fill you in on what's going on. So he told me, and then I was like, Ooh, that's a lot to take in. It was a lot of information. And then he was like, wicked is not the same without Stormy Daniels. Do you want to come home? And I was like, yes. <laughs> I was like, I miss it. And he was like, everybody misses you. Like you were such an important part of the brand. Obviously I wasn't there from the beginning and I didn't do these like famous things like, like the Brad Armstrong and, and Jonathan Morgan and you know, I mean, they did, but I did create the wicked passions line. I did direct almost a hundred movies for the company. I did operation doesn't store me. Like I am synonymous with wicked pictures and he you was, were like their big female director. Yeah. And I directed probably more movies for the company than anybody, Mm -hmm. I would think, especially features. Mm Because I, even there are other big directors like Brad, who is so fucking talented. Some of his big stuff was all sex. Like, all of my stuff was scripted. Mm -hmm. You know, I was doing between 10 and 12 movies a year. Scripts. It was like like this hamster wheel of porn. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And uh, so I was like, yeah, I really miss it. And he was like, let's talk next week. And then he made me an offer that I was not expecting. I was like, okay. <laughs> and it's to come back and I get to basically do whatever I want. He's like, let's 
bring it back to what it used to be and you're the person to do that and I'm giving you free reign to write and direct and you know a lot of the restrictions are off it's kind of strange because Wicket's not condom now yeah um, I don't know like you know I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna go I've never directed a well, it's going to go easier is what it's going to do. Yeah, I don't even know what to do with myself with all this you're, extra time. You're, yeah, you're gonna, <laughs> it's just going to be easier, <laughs> trust me. Um, but yeah, and I direct my first movie back uh, the first part of April. And I haven't written a script in like four years. And I was afraid I wouldn't know what to do, but it, it came right back. Like know? riding a bike, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so like you, riding a dick. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, can you say like what it's going to be about or maybe who's going to be in it? Uh, I don't know who's going to be in it, but I will tell you like I had a moment. Like I actually had a moment of like, I I got emotional when I got, to, I like text like my Latin guy Rick and stuff. And I just wrote, hey, and, and Jake Jacobs, who shot Cameron for me for so long. Like there's this, some people that have been with me from the beginning. Mm-hmm. I mean, these are my crew. They work for me 10 times a month for the la- for like 15, 16, 10 years, you yeah. know? And I sent like, you know, a message and, and I just said, hey, do you miss me? And they were like, Stormy, of course. Yeah, this is somebody I haven't talked to in four years. I'm like, uh, are you available April 4th and 5th? And they wrote, yeah. I go, please hold for Stormy Daniels for Wicked Pictures. And I used to send us so many of those texts every month. Like, yeah. Because I would just copy and paste the dates and send it yeah, to the yeah. crew. Like, are you available? Wait for a yes. And then please hold for. And it was like this text. It was like, you know, and I got to send And they were like, what? Oh, my God. And they would call. Everybody called crying. They were getting the band back together. <laughs> <laughs> but so, but my first movie back is a little spooky because mm-hmm. I think it's, it's going to take me a little bit. They do want me to do some of the classic stories comedies and mm-hmm. and I'm excited to do that but what came to me first was a little bit of a ghost yeah. story well because I remember when we were talking last time you were on the podcast you talked about how you really took like your day-to-day life experiences mm-hmm. and you wrote that's yeah, where so you got like, your inspiration yeah. from so I was thinking to myself when I saw that announcement I'm like gosh she's been through so much these yeah. last few years like I bet you have so many ideas yeah I do but the first one back it's it's not a simple script, but it it is a spooky one, um, mm-hmm. and it's got a ghost in it, and um, I'm excited because Justin, who's never seen me direct, really is going to come out with me. Um, he's my you know my best friend and my partner, but he's also a special effects makeup artist. Oh, that's, that's his other job. So yeah. this is a way for me to like be able to like bring him on, and he's never met all these people that were so important to me for so long. Right. He knows them by name. Yeah. And maybe even by photo a little bit. Cause like Justin and I have been together almost 24 seven for the last two and a half years. Wow. This is like the only, this is my first trip without him that I can mm-hmm. remember. Cause he's hanging out with his girl for Valentine's day. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like, it's going to be really cool to bring my best friend who knows me as this over here and meet all these people. And it's either going to go amazing or it's going to go really poorly. <laughs> I have a feeling everything's going to... I do too. It's all the very, stars are going to align for you. Yeah, like kind of a bunch of things that felt stuck for a long time just suddenly started clicking and coming unglued. Yeah, it's been really cool because, you know, there's been such like a... You know, when you look at the list of nominees for AVN, like Best Director, there's so many female, female, female names on Remember there. Remember how much shit they used to give me? Yes. Nobody believed I was really directing my own movies. Yeah. The thing that made me the most angry is when Operation Desert Stormy came out and it was like this big, huge project and it won so many awards and like the reviewers like from X Critics and, and like all these people were like just gushing over the movie and they were saying best adult movie ever made, best comedy ever done and they loved it and then the last thing would be like it's really disappointing that you know we'll never know who is really responsible for it or whatever. I would rather you fucking hate my movie, hate it, because yeah. you're entitled to your opinion, right. but give me credit. Don't say you loved it and not give me credit. Like, yeah. that's a lie. And it just infuriated me. And it worked. I had to work so hard to be taken serious because they thought they were the Wicket was just taking the Stormy Daniels name and putting it on it to sell, and that I wasn't actually doing the work. And I did. And there are some directors that there do are, that. and yeah. I am not one of them. And so I had to fight really, really hard to be taken serious, especially especially since I was also still performing. Yeah. And they couldn't wrap their head around, well, she's in the movie. How is she directing it? Yeah. And so, like, I actually flew some some reviewers out on my own dime to be like, you can fucking hate it all you want, but don't say I didn't do it. Yeah. Or they'd be like, oh, she's the best female director in the business. I'd rather be the third or fourth best director Director than, than the best female because my pussy's not directing shit. She and I don't agree on anything anyway ever. <laughs> so you're not coming back to performing. You're just coming back to directing, yeah, right? Yeah, just directing for now, yeah. 
who I'm not going to say never because if I say I'm never coming back, I'm doing an anal game bang next week. I know how yeah. this works. I am not challenging the universe. <laughs> so who knows? <laughs> but as of right now, I have, you know, I have no intention. I looked really good on my last movie going out. I don't know if I want to put this hell damage back on, on it film. It sucks, like, having to be in front of the camera yeah, all the time. Just it's taking, not fun. I just took promo pictures, you know, for mm-hmm. Wicked two days ago. And I'm like, ugh. Yeah. Like, I haven't sucked in this hard. Or, like, my back hurts from arching. Yeah. Like, I had to wear heels. I haven't worn anything but vans. You don't ghost hunt in heels. Yeah. You'll die. And you're, like, the quintessential perfect toe pointer as well. Yes. So, like, I bet your feet, like, were killing you afterwards. Yeah, it was the worst. I was yeah. like, I don't even have all this stuff anymore. I haven't – I was like, I don't have not worn matching bra and panties in four years. <laughs> Well, I'm excited. Do you know how many movies a year you're doing? I'm doing four for now. Okay. Uh, that's what the contract is for. Um, Axel said, if you, you know, I don't want to tie you down too much because I do have so many other projects going yeah. on. Like when Surreal Life comes out, I'm going to have to do press for that. I'm doing this documentary thing. I'm doing Spooky Babes. I'm doing, I'm traveling a bunch. There's just a lot of other stuff I do that he didn't want me to f- be too up, like, you know, overextend yeah. it, which yeah. I thought was really great. Um, so I have to do four, but I can do more if I want. Right, right. Well, I'm excited. Me too. It's so great. <laughs> well, it's been so amazing having you back. Um, it's been so great to catch up. Yes. And I'm so excited for everything that you have going on. Yeah. Um, can you let everybody know where they can find you on social media if they yes. don't already know? Yes. Um, so all my social media has the blue check mark. I don't understand why people still keep falling for these scams. It's it's just so it's sad. Crazy. So my Instagram is the Stormy Daniels. Um, I do not have a Facebook. So if you're talking to Stormy on Facebook, it's not real. Um, my uh, Twitter is Stormy Daniels. Everybody should know that one. Uh, and anything Spooky Babes has the same thing. So Spooky Babes Show. That's uh, Spooky Babes Show on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, uh, and our YouTube channel is Spooky Babe Show, and you can go on there and see like some of our clips, and our trailer is up there. Um, and SpookyBabeShow.com is if if you want to find out about the paranormal stuff, and then StormyDaniels.com, which is not an adult site, so that's safe for work. Uh, I do have an OnlyFans, which hasn't been updated very much because I didn't have anybody to shoot me, <laughs> but I've been yelled at for the last three days. We're shooting you. We're shooting you. We're shooting you. So that might be a thing. Depends on how much weight I can lose. <laughs> yeah, but everyone's going to love you as you are. And yeah, you look amazing. Also, it's just a, so much work. Yeah. I feel like I'm forgetting something. But anyway, uh, that's all the social media. But Spooky Babe Show is all the same. Stormy Daniel stuff is all verified. Perfect. And you guys can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Holly Randall. I'm also on TikTok, um, Holly Randall Unfiltered. And of course, if you want to support this podcast, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Do you love your favorite cheat meal or dessert, but then the next morning you wake up feeling like gross and bloated? Well, I have found this new greens super powder that helps with that. And right now, Bloom is offering my listeners 15% off if you go to bloomnu.com slash holly.